Welcome aboard the Besetto Express. We'll cover three countries. Bay, Beijing in China. Sei, Seoul in Korea. And To, Tokyo in Japan. Together we'll explore the culture of Besetto. All aboard the Besetto Express. The greatest discovery of mankind. Soil, the everlasting resource of mankind. A ceramist puts his whole mind and sweat into making a piece of porcelain. Almost perfect porcelain like this took 9,000 years to develop. He had to be careful to pass along each process, such as kneading, baking, and enameling. The Besedo nations all enjoyed a highly advanced ceramic culture. Let's see those works of art that were created in the midst of 1300 degree flames. Hello everyone, I'm Doris Hahn, your host of Beisito Express. And on today's show, we're going to be learning more about the ceramics of the Beisito countries. Originally, ceramics were made in these countries for use in the kitchen, such as plates and cups. But as the styles and shapes of these ceramics changed, people started looking towards them as an artwork. They were especially important in displaying a country's traditional marks and symbols. Why don't we start today's journey in entering the Asian world of ceramics? 10,000 years ago, man made ceramic ware for the first time. Society changed from hunting and gathering to agriculture and ceramic naturally came into existence. As pottery developed, images of men and animals were also added. Once man learned to fill ceramic ware with rice or water, he became fascinated by their convenience and thus pottery advanced incessantly into its current form. The Chinese had long made use of hard-baked pottery in their homes. They were the best in making pottery at the time and eventually invented new wares that were both water-resistant and harder than the old ones. Those ceramics, named Celadon, developed through advanced techniques of baking after enameling in the last stage. As the age of porcelain culture unfurled, people enjoyed celadon porcelain that looked like jade in the subsequent culture of white porcelain. Actually, a careful look at pottery of any nation shows us that celadon porcelain gradually gave way to white porcelain. Chinese porcelain culture came to bear the ornamented beauty more and more, ultimately reaching the stage of classy porcelain. This is the most popular countries in the world. So, when the Chinese were in the early period, they were in 有这种文化交流了，因为这种咱们都是儒家治国，都受孔孟之道的影响，有这种共同的一种这个哲学观。啊，当然也有不同，你得有地区的这种民族特点。The history of Korean pottery began about eight thousand years ago. At the time, most pottery was not so much for daily use as it was for religious or burial services. In the meantime, the Celadon culture was introduced into Korea around the 9th century. It was then that household ceramics entered into the picture, including glasses and liquor bottles. Korean Celadon grew along with the Buddhist culture and developed into a gorgeous and sophisticated form reflecting the age of those times. 
In the early 12th century, Korean celadon came to have the hallmark clear jade green color and unique patterns, and with the advent of inlaid celadon, it was at the peak of its prosperity. Our Korean master is influenced by Chinese master. So, the Chinese master is called our master, which is the same. 그런데 이제 우리 것은 차차 상감 청자로 발전해서 우리 독특한 특징으로 발전해 가는 데 비해서 이제 중국은 또 중국 나름대로 어, 중국인들이 좋아하는 색깔로 변해 갑니다. Unfortunately, Punchong sagi became prevalent instead of celadon with the collapse of the Korean dynasty and the subsequent foundation of the Joseon dynasty in the 14th century. Bunchan Sagi quickly grew in popularity, but the line died out when the Japanese invaded and the Chosun potters fled to Japan. Porcelain that appeared afterwards was sheer white. White porcelain represents the Chosun dynasty and nurtured the unique Korean porcelain culture. Looking at the images drawn on white porcelain, people can feel the beauty as if facing nature. White porcelain is tinged with the colors of chastity and purity. Ah, Joseon 시대 백자는 역시 중국의 백자의 영향을 받아서 만들어졌지만, 아 색깔이라든지 형태에 있어서 또 한국인들이 좋아하는 그 단순한 형태로 발전해가는 것이 특징입니다. Japan was rather slow in developing its porcelain culture due to its isolation policies. For this reason, Japan enjoyed the culture of earthenware for a much longer time. In its early stage of pottery, like in any other country, Japan had crockery that was coarse and pointed at the bottom. It was not until the age of Heian that a more advanced flat bottom earthenware was made. Despite the flourishing porcelain culture in China and Korea, Japan didn't know how to make it until the 16th century. Japanese porcelain blossomed after its encounter with Korea thanks to the Korean potters who went there. Japanese ceramics in their early stage was essentially the same as Korea and China due to the fact that the Korean potters were kidnapped. But the second generation potters began to reflect Japanese sentiment and culture into their porcelain. As you see here, today the spinning machine is electronically supplied, but in the olden days, the artist had to spin the wheel manually. But in each case, in order to create the perfect final masterpiece, the artist needs to put in a lot of sweat and dedication. Now that you've seen how the ceramics are made, why don't we go view the final products? China is so famous for its ceramic ware that the word China means porcelain in English. China enjoyed and developed ceramic ware early and it is proud of its gorgeous porcelain. Chinese ceramic ware made of China clay called Jato had great influence on Korea and Japan. Chinese porcelain was continuously perfected and this reflected its diverse nationalities. Chinese porcelain is the synonym of man-made beauty. It was made in consideration of the Chinese's favorite colors and patterns and was brought to perfection into the form that is as gorgeous as can be and nearest to China itself. Japan fell behind the neighboring countries in view of the porcelain culture. Oftentimes, it is said that Japanese ceramic ware was born, making China porcelain its father and Korean porcelain its mother. 
Japan made every effort possible to learn how to make porcelain and kidnapped a great number of Korean potters. That was the start of production during this sometimes called porcelain war. In the 17th century, Japan could make its unique porcelain with patterns that were peculiar to Japan and finish the porcelain exquisitely with great craftsmanship. Japanese ceramic ware was highly ornamented and speedily developed. Japanese porcelain bore the characteristics of each region and that helped establish Japan's own porcelain culture. Korean celadon is one of the most representative Korean industrial works of art. It bears beauty that is both noble and elegant. Korean celadon is curvaceous like flowing water even though it had no special patterns or ornamentation. Korean celadon becomes wider at its base, relaxing the viewer. The green jade tinged with the Korean sky advanced ultimately into the unique inlaid celadon. In the inlaying technique, potters first shape wares with white clay, engrave patterns on them, and lastly fill them with clay of different colors. This technique paved the way to inlaid celadon. Buddhism had a great influence on most of the patterns and images. A cloud that symbolized an ideal land, a crane, a flower, and a butterfly are cases in point. Those images reflect the desire to make an easy passage into eternity. Uh, 생기죠. 그때는 클레이징이 거의 없고 색이 약간 탁하지만 그 상태는 굉장히 좋습니다. 그러다가 차츰 한국화가 되면서 12세기가 되면 청자 유학이 맑아집니다. 그러면 한국적인 비색 청자라는 게 그때부터 나오기 시작하죠. 그러다가 12세기 후반쯤 되면 상감 청자의 기법들이 등장해서 13세기, 14세기는 그 상감 청자로 완전히 이렇게 돌아서는 그런 양상이 나타나죠. 상감 청자라는 것은 결국은 어, 원래는 그 상감 기법이 도자기에 응용된 것은 저희 나라가 처음이에요. What do you think? Aren't they all beautiful? Beautiful but yet different. The raw materials produced in Korea, China, and Japan are all different. So naturally, so are the end products. But not only do they look different in each country, so are their uses. Why don't we take a look now and see what each purpose these ceramics served in each country? China and porcelain, the once most important necessities of human life. Despite the changes due in large part to the development of metals and plastics, they are still loved by many people. Men appreciate porcelain which came from nature through their hands. They truly know they are also a part of nature. Today, the procedures to make China have largely been mechanized, but then porcelain still comes into being from the potter's fingertips. Patterns, too, have been greatly changed to match the modern senses, but at least the potter's elaboration into porcelain is all the same. Chinese porcelain is still very popular. Although the once simple and rather practical tableware is now decorated and gorgeous, it is still Chinese ceramic ware occupying the Chinese dining table. Japan was most slow in flourishing the porcelain culture among the Beseto Three Nations. Japanese porcelain culture advanced enough to equal that of the European culture. Today, Japanese china pulls its weight not only as household effects, but also as interior decorations. 
The Japanese think highly of porcelain and spend hefty sums to acquire good pieces. Today, Japanese porcelain is on the world stage and well regarded as one of the best chinas. Koreans enjoy the tea culture because they have long performed the tea ceremony in order to cultivate their body and soul. It is for this reason that the Korean porcelain culture is sometimes called the teacup culture, as various forms of teacups are used in Korea. Furthermore, everyone in Korea is familiar with the culture of earthenware since it has been used since the prehistoric age. People use clayware for practical purposes. Clayware is everywhere in the Korean home. It is used to boil rice, to fill side dishes with, and for various other purposes. The time-honored table culture of each nation and tableware that best befits it. In the tableware, there are not only foods, but also breath and culture that have lasted thousands of years. In Korea, these ceramics are baked in oven temperature that reaches up to 1300 degrees Celsius. So they believe that in order for one to cool completely, it takes about a thousand years. So if you listen real carefully at night, you can hear all the ceramics in Korea cooling down. Do you have one at home? If you do, if you listen carefully at night, maybe you could hear the thousand years worth of history that lies in each one. I hope you enjoyed watching today's show. Until next time, take care. Chinese porcelain that bears gorgeous features and various countenances is like a great player. Japanese porcelain brings up the image of a Japanese woman who wears the colorful kimono. Korean porcelain bears the beauty of nature that is rather simple. As we can gather, china and porcelain are the crystals into which the spirits and traditions of each nation are soaked. <laughs>